Have you ever wondered what those points mean when they're listed on or next to a bottle of wine at a store? If so, this video is for you. Today, we're gonna talk about the wine ratings, or also known as the wine point system. Hey guys, I'm Ken. And I'm Olivia. And we're Wine Therapy. In today's video, we're gonna discuss the history behind the wine ratings and how the main wine ratings work. After that, we're gonna talk about the main issues with wine ratings, and be sure to stick around until the end of the video because we're gonna talk about how we like to interpret wine ratings to make it the easiest for you. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you wanna learn more about wine. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a video. So, how did the wine ratings start? Well, at the beginning part of the 20th century, there was a lot of wine being created throughout the world and in the U.S. Because of this, it was really hard to differentiate between the, all the different types of wine. So when you went to a store, it was hard to tell which wine you might like and which one you might not. To make this easier, in 1959, uh, the University of California decided to come up with a wine scale or a wine point system. It was a scale between zero and 20 points. However, the 100 point wine scale was developed in the 1970s by Robert Parker. He was a wine critic for Wine Advocate and he created a concise and easy way to know how a good wine would taste. This 100 point scale became a lot more popular than the previous scale used because it was a lot simpler for the general public to understand. The 100 points aligned really closely to the A through F grading scale that you typically use in school. The 50 to 100 point scale system is still the most popular scale and most widely used scale today. Today, some of the biggest wine rating operations include Wine Enthusiast Magazine, Wine Advocate, Wine Spectator Magazine, or even Robert Parker himself. These various magazines or operations hire wine critics which give their opinions or ratings on wines throughout the world. In our opinion, we think that Wine Enthusiast is typically the easiest when it comes to rating wines, where Wine Advocate is typically one of the tougher ones. Today, wine ratings are typically used more for a marketing tool. The higher wine rates, Typically, the better it sells overall. So a lot of winemakers are trying to make wines that rate higher on the market. So, how does the 100 point wine rating scale work? A wine rating is typically a number assigned to a wine based on a 50 to 100 point scale. The wine scoring looks simple, however it requires a trained palate to determine the wine's rating. Wine ratings consider different aspects of a wine, including color, aroma, flavor and finish, and the overall quality of the wine. The 100 point scale also tries to tell you how close that wine tastes to how it should with that grape variety, from that specific location, from that general region of the world. For example, we have this Grayson Chardonnay, um, which has a 97 point rating. That means that it tastes almost exactly as a Chardonnay should from the Napa Valley from within the United States, if that kind of makes sense. The scores on the 100 point scale start at 50 to 59, which are really bad wines that are undrinkable, then 60 to 69, which are still really bad wines, but they're drinkable. Then you have the wines that are rated between 70 to 79 which are wines that have some, some definite problems to them, but they taste average. Then you have the wines rated between 80 to 89, which are good wines, which taste above average. Then you have 90 to 94, which are great wines. And last, you have 95 to 100, which are exceptional wines. Again, just to make it easy, think about it as a grading scale from school, A to F. Typically, the wine rating scale receives a lot of criticism, and that's because it doesn't fully explain how a wine actually tastes, 
or rather it doesn't provide an in-depth analysis of the flavor profile. For example, a 94-point Cabernet is not going to taste the same as a 94-point Chardonnay. It's also really hard to compare wines from around the world. For example, a 97-point Chardonnay from the United States is going to taste a lot different than a 97-point Chardonnay from France. Just because it's not giving you that in-depth analysis on the flavors, it's going to be hard to make those comparisons. Also with the wine rating system, critics have been shown to trend towards certain wines. For example, wine critics tend to like bold wines and smooth wines, and typically give them better ratings. It's also important to remember that there are many great wines that are not rated. And this is due to the fact that winemakers don't want to take that risk of receiving a low score. For example, if a winemaker received a 70, they wouldn't advertise for it because it's bad marketing. So how do we interpret these wine ratings? Well, the way we like to think about it is kind of comparing it to how we like to think about Rotten Tomato scores for movies. When you see the 94 points or 95 points or 87 points, don't think about it as this is a really great wine or this is an average wine. Think about it as a percentage. For example, 93 points. Think about it as a 93% chance that you're going to enjoy that wine. Again, because you don't have the full flavor profile of the wine from the points alone, it, I would just take it as kind of the chance that you're going to enjoy it instead of I'm going to love this wine or I'm going to hate this wine. So last, we want to give you a couple of recommendations on some low cost but highly rated wines. First, as we've mentioned in past videos, we have a 94 point Grand Alberoni Rosso. Next, we have this 97 point Grayson Cellars Chardonnay. And last, we have an 89 point Milbrandt Cabernet Sauvignon. And that's all you need to know about wine ratings and the wine point system. How often do you rely upon wine points? Do you think that they're always right? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you in our next video. Cheers! Cheers.